Okay, um, Marsh, day three. Um, Envoy Allen, 11 to 8 on. I think 11 to 8 on could represent value come the end of this race. Um, could look stupid in a few days' time for saying that, but uh, I cannot see anything getting past Envoy Allen here. Anybody going to disagree? I can't really remember a year like this where the three novice races have got yeah. Three horses that are going to go off odds on, and I suspect that a lot of punters, and I don't even think it'd be that muggy, would be putting them in treble, doubles and trebles. Because, I mean, all, around, all across the land, there'll be people putting football teams in at those sort of prices in multis every week and not thinking anything of it. It's very, very hard, I think, to find a hole in those three very good novices. And as we've said with a couple of races previously, like the opposition to Monkfish just isn't there. And I think you can say the same about Envoy Allen in the Marsh as well. This is what a four-day festival does for you, eh, Ben? <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine if the Marsh didn't exist and we had uh, Shishkin and Energamine and Monkfish and Envoy Allen. Oh, yeah. that, that is a, a lip-smacking uh, uh, thought, isn't it? But we've got the Marsh. He'll probably win, won't he? Uh, uh, the one thing is, he's changed tables, hasn't he? And yeah. very yeah. close to the festival as well. And... We don't know. We just don't know if a change in routine, perhaps a, a change in feed, I don't know, is going to affect him. Um, it's the one thing if you, if you, you know, hunters aren't, aren't too bothered, uh, uh, are they, about um, how they find their angles and some people will be taking him on on the back of, of moving yards. Um, if there's one to beat him, I suspect uh, Sham Blue's jumping will keep him in it for a long way. He, he looks... Uh, a, a, a good horse for a marsh in a normal year. It's not a normal year. We've got Envalon in there, but um, I think Chamblou will run well and he's, he's probably the one in the best of the rest market. Okay, yeah, uh, Chamblou. Concerned about um, stamina uh, up the sand downhill, I think it was, wasn't it, um, in the Silly Isles? I was admittedly on heavy ground and that's unlikely. It was uh, really we, heavy ground. Yeah, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Um, yeah, okay, Envoy, Alan, is he... Uh, Banker of the week material for either of you? Are you smiling, Dan? I don't know. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be my sort I'd, I'd describe as a bank. I mean, he's a, I think I'd rather back Monkfish probably of the pair if I was going to take both of them. But I honestly don't think people would be mad to look at those three novice shorties and think they're worth perming up in something. But yeah. I said, I'm just killing for the idea that there's not a solid each way alternative to any of them all without the favourite. And I, I really don't think there are. No. Okay. Um, the Ryanair, I mean, you mentioned, both mentioned uh, you thought the champion chase was a good renewal. I think this is one of the best, it looks on paper anyway, that, that we've seen since the Ryanair has been going. Um, Alaho, Alaho, call him what you will, four to one favourite he is. Uh, we've got the likes of Min, um, Imperial Aura, Melon, all involved. Um, thoughts on this one then, Ben? Yeah, cracking race. Uh... Dodgy, cracking race. Um, I think it's more wide open than four to on the field. Uh, I, th I think the best form for this year's Ryanair might be last year's Ryanair. Uh, you look at how that's worked out with A. Plutard in third and Frodon in fourth. And you had Min beating St. Calvados and both of them are, are in there again, you know, coming on the back of, of bad runs, really. But we know this race suits them. Uh, so I wouldn't throw either of those, those two out of the equation. Then you've got improving horses like Imperial Aura, who was a bit unfortunate last time and probably hasn't had an ideal prep. But from what we saw before that, he looks an ideal type for this race. Um, he's still got to find a, another level of form, but I think he can. He just looks like he's got more to give Imperial Aura. So I wouldn't rule him out either. You've got festival horses like Melon, who always seems to run well at the festival and nowhere else, who you'd give a chance to on his best farm. You think back to last year's Gold Cup and remember how Real Steel tanked into it and you'd think the Ryanair might be an ideal race for him. There's so many, there's loads. Uh, so yeah, brilliant race. I think Imperial Aura is the one I'm leaning towards. I'm not saying he's a... He's, he's, he's well found in the market for what he's achieved, but I just think there's more to come from him and I think it's going to be run to suit. He, he just looks perfect for it. So he'd be my token selection. Okay, and Pedro Aura for Ben. Um, Dan, uh, the favourite, I mean, it looked like he was outstayed in the RSA up the hill 
um, last year, this would be, for me anyway, more like the ideal trip for him. you agree? Yeah, I think he's... I think if there's a top-class horse in this race who's yet to prove himself top-class on the form book, I mean, Min has. He, he is a top-class horse, but I hated how he was shaping prior to that bad mistake, finishing him off, finishing him off in Ireland last time. He was getting out, jumped every fence by a notebook, and he didn't look him at all himself. So I think the horse who's going to replace him with that mantle is, is Aloho, I think. He's basically still unexposed as a chase around this sort of distance because unusually for Willie, I think he's got his trip requirements wrong twice now. Tried him in the RSA last season. He was walking up the running with Manila Rindo. They tried him in the Savills over three again. He didn't fire. What happened at Punchestown on his reappearance? Nobody knows. It was running dreadful visibility. But I thought Thurler's was a lot more like it. And at Thurler's really, for me, was he looked like the horse I thought he might have been for a while. He burnt off Battle of Adoyen, Balco de Flo. They both had a crack at him. They were absolutely exhausted into the straight. And in theory, Ellie May, she was only getting two pounds, but she had the perfect setup. She tanked into it from off a pace. Looked like she might come and pick him up. And he just said, see you later on the running. I thought it was a pretty devastating front running performance. And I think that sort of display will translate well to a Ryanair. I don't see loads of competition for the lead. And I think he's... His superbly bold jumping and just this bruising run style that he has over this sort of trip might just set him apart. I'd be more confident about him than most of the, the graded races this week. Yep. Um, Aloha then for Dan and yours truly. Imperial Aura for Ben. Just a quick word about Melon because I mean, although his actual CV says one from seven over fences, you'd think that's not a great strike rate. He's run some damn good races at the very highest level, hasn't he? Is he one that's going to run into a, into the frame but just not be quite good enough on the day? He, well, he, he brings festival form, doesn't he? I mean, he's been second in a Supreme, a couple of champion hurdles and a marsh, and he just always seems to come alive at Cheltenham, uh, whether he will without crowds, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, and, and the way he shapes earlier in the season... Um, especially at Christmas behind Ed Plutard, the way he, he jumped that day um, just suggests he's still he's still got a big race in him at some point. Whether it's in this Ryanair, I'm I'm not sure, but you could never count, put him out of calculations, could you? At this this meeting. 